Do you believe in ghosts? This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World. So we're approaching fall and everybody already knows that's one of my favorite times of the year. Not because of the obvious things with jack-o'-lanterns and trick-or-treat. It's because we've created an amazing Victorian ghost walk called The Revisionist that happened last year for the first time. It was the inaugural year and it is a ghost walk throughout the historic town of Chesapeake City, Maryland. Now this production is called The Revisionist, The Return of the Golden Age of the Ghost Story. Now people have asked, what's, what's a revisionist? Now in this storyline, a revisionist is someone who has the ability to see and speak with the undead. Now there's so much unrest and spirits writhing in Chesapeake City that they reached out to the group in England to come over on a boat to the historic water town to figure out and stop all these amazingly awful spirits. So the, the lead revisionist came over and he cultivated an elite team and they built a secret society in town just to handle all of the spirits that are running roughshod through the town. So when we talk about things like the golden age of the ghost story, what exactly is that? I want to communicate this to you because I find this so amazingly interesting. So there was a time in the Victorian era when the real framework from the original ghost story was built. So when you hear of uh, poets and writers, short story writers like Edgar Allan Poe, M.R. James, H.P. Lovecraft, they kind of built the building blocks of the original ghost story that we still have today. So this event is actually, when I talk about the return of the golden age of the ghost story, this is, a, this is handwritten short stories that will find yourself as viewers walking through this, this amazingly dark town, stopping and hearing handwritten ghost stories about people that lived in Chesapeake City in the Victorian era, and I can guarantee it will be absolutely bone chilling. So I would like to give you an idea, a little, a little, a little lead in on, on what to expect as far as the stories. I shouldn't really do this, but I feel like you need to be prepared because you might get scared to death of this thing. So there's going to be five handwritten short stories that will be five segments throughout this event. As you're led by your lead revisionist with, um, with a lamplight, you will be stopping five different places in the town. And these stories are really, really scary. Um, a couple, I, I should do it, but I'm going to do it. So you might find yourself hearing a story about a, a loblolly pine tree that became a, a piece of wood up in an old house in Chesapeake. And a ventriloquist might just whittle a ventriloquist dummy out of that wood. And imagine this, that wood in the early Civil War time someone was killed on that tree and then of course the spirit possibly might come into that wood come into the dummy and then wreak havoc on chesapeake city that, that's that's one of the interesting stories there's a story about we all know that the c and d canal comes right through chesapeake city is a historic water town and what if a young guy was was drowned in a boat out in a canal and his body fell down into the silt and then as he came back over a hundred years later it's a good chance that he would be possibly half man, half amphibian that might come back to wreak havoc on that town. We're walking along the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal. In the, in the mid 17th century, there was a concept by Augustine Herman to meld and meet the Chesapeake Bay and the Delaware River, which is what this does. Now this, 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 this river and, and canal was actually formally dug in around I would say around 1824, mules and, and horses would drag barges to dig out this canal. So this is, this, is a, this is a landmark in itself. As a kid walking and spending time on these waters under the Chesapeake City Bridge, it was always writhing with current and it was really dangerous. A lot of people you know, will boat out here, but to me, we weren't, even any, we weren't allowed anywhere near this water because when the water goes around the actual bridge, 
man, the current was unbelievable. So we weren't even allowed to spend time here, but we really did ha have a great time with all the lure and everything the Chesapeake City has to offer, especially with the canal. It's an amazing place because there's so much transit between states that utilize this. You'll see massive barge. And I'll never forget, they barely can fit under the Chesapeake City Bridge. But with that comes a lot of dark stories, a lot of crazy moments, and a lot of people that have met their maker in these waters. So to me, that lends itself to a ghost story. And I can only promise you, at The Revisionist, there will be stories about these exact waters. Because when you go out in them, it's very possible that the current can bring you down with it. One of the amazing things that I like to do when I think about this event is the imagery and the feeling that you get when you're walking down the dark streets of a town like Chesapeake City. You know, we have Victorian architecture everywhere, you have brick walkways, and then all you're really gonna be left with ultimately is signs from lights that are in the streets. So when we create this experience, we have to bring in a, a team of light guys, a team of set guys. And everyone knows that to do those correctly, there has to be an, an initial imagery that drives the rest of the procedures of the experience. So as an artist, I tend to sketch out in almost in nauseam all the imagery from the characters of this event. I did that last year and I'm excited, even more excited to do it this year. So when I think about these things, for example, we're looking at one of the perspective stories, which is the story about a vaudevillian ventriloquist by the name of Amazing Herb and his ventriloquist dummy, Gabby. So the idea of a dummy, a, you know, a vaudevillian kind of ventriloquist dummy, it's already scary as it is. I mean, most people find that terrifying, the idea that, that these things could, you know, come alive. Um, so when I think about how this is going to get done, you know, that, that character and that, that moment has to be just terrifying. You know, the idea that you're going to be creating, you know, a dummy that's seen, you know, a life and time since the 1900s. It's, it's a long, long time ago. So what, what would his skin tone be? What would the, if it was made out of wood, what would the striations in the grain of the wood look like? So again, this is, this is all things that I, I obviously have fun doing. Um, but it helps the team understand what the goal is. The set, di the set designers can understand, you know, and, and again, it's, it's, to me, it's, <laughs> I just can't, I laugh about it because it's so, it's so strange, but it's so fulfilling when you're, when you're building this. Ventriloquists and their dummies are terrifying to people. But I have to ask you a question. Is it the ventriloquist controlling the dummy or is it the dummy controlling the ventriloquist? I have a strong feeling that you're gonna find out the answer to that in The Revisionist. So in this production, I've teamed up with a friend and an amazing screenwriter by the name of April Lindsay. She and I put together an amazing production and tickets sold out last year. So if you wanna get tickets, which I strongly recommend, celebrating it with us, celebrating Halloween the right way and fall, tickets to be had, at www.poplarhall.us. The dates for the productions are Fridays and Saturdays, 15th and 16th, 22nd and 23rd, and the last weekend is 29th and 30th. So make sure you come out and celebrate Halloween with us. This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World. Dude, did you, did you hear that?